پاکستان and we are moving forward with whistle blowing we've done most of the theory of whistle blowing we had many sessions on whistle blowing its various aspects dimensions its context its implications uh, the different laws uh, at a federal level at the provincial level uh, how the right to information uh, is a very important aspect of whistle blowing uh, the role of different stakeholders and then the most important part the whistle blower him or herself uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, today i'm going to be sharing uh, a case study with you Uh, of uh, a real incident. Uh, there are uh, hundreds and thousands of incidents taking place in Pakistan, unfortunately. But due to social pressures, peer pressure, uh, due to non-conducive environment, uh, due to uh, lack of implementation of laws, uh, what we see is, is that uh, there are many problems uh, related to whistleblowing. And when people tend to whistleblow, then there are many consequences. Uh, and usually there is uh, institutionalized retaliation and victimization of the individual. So I'll just share with you uh, a case study. This is a public sector case study. And uh, uh, in this public sector organization, uh, there was this gentleman who was officer uh, in the whole organization, only directly reporting to the chairman. And uh, uh, he had a great responsibility. Uh, he had to undertake uh, some very important projects which were related to community development, which were related to uh, the improvement of quality of life uh, of the population uh, at, as, as a whole. And in all of that, uh, this gentleman uh, comes with this great vigor and determination uh, to make a positive impact and to do things honestly. And uh, then uh, this individual starts uh, working. And uh, uh, laterally or horizontally, what we see is, is that he is linked Uh, to another senior official uh, and uh, uh, that woman uh, is uh, trying to uh, create hegemony uh, over uh, this uh, gentleman's uh, particular role and authority but uh, actually uh, that itself is illegal but what happens is is that uh, because a lot of funds were involved in all of it a lot of contracting was involved a lot of procurement was involved uh, so this uh, uh, lady starts uh, Uh, intruding into everything and trying to impose her will, uh, trying to do favoritism, nepotism, uh, trying to uh, pressurize uh, the gentleman to dole out different contracts. And in all of that whole process, uh, this gentleman and the rest of his team uh, are developing structure, are developing processes, are developing systems uh, so that uh, this does not have to take place and things are done in a transparent uh, and Uh, in an appropriate way uh, in which uh, meritocracy uh, and uh, transparency uh, and honesty are upheld. But uh, this pressure keeps on building on. Uh, every day, different episodes uh, and different events would be taking place. And uh, this lady, along with the chairman, uh, would try to undermine uh, the role of the gentleman. And because of so many pressures, what we see is, is that uh, many people start resigning, those people who are Uh, truthful and honest, they start resigning from the organization because of this very detrimental and this very negative environment. And then what happens is that uh, when there is hiring, uh, then they want uh, their own favorites to be hired uh, and done away with merit. And uh, again, uh, they don't want merit to be fo followed in the recruitment and selection process. And therefore, there is immense pressure uh, that uh, some of their favorites uh, should be accommodated uh, in these uh, new lucrative government jobs. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, the tussle became more open. And then another thing which uh, emerged was uh, that they wanted to conduct an event and they wanted to spend uh, crores and crores of rupees on that event. And that gentleman uh, then thought that uh, that is a wastage uh, of uh, public money and that should not be allowed. So basically, uh, two major episodes came in in which uh, overspending uh, of uh, money On an event came in, uh, this uh, illegal and uh, non merito uh, crazy based uh, hiring. And thirdly was also the awarding of a communication contract without uh, any tender or just playing around with the tender and awarding it to a one-man briefcase company. So these three uh, episodes uh, were uh, being pressurized on the gentleman and the gentleman was being threatened and the gentleman was being undermined and the gentleman was getting a tough time. And all of these things were happening. Uh, so therefore, uh, this gentleman then uh, blows the whistle. 
and uh, when he blows the whistle and sends all of it in writing, uh, then definitely the whole organization gets together and starts targeting him. So the chairman and this lady, uh, they get together, the rest of the organization, and then start, uh, uh, start do doing character assassination, start doing retaliation, start doing victimization, and also uh, start creating numerous problems uh, from all possible angles. Now, uh, this gentleman uh, naturally was facing immense pressure after blowing the whistle. And uh, every day uh, there was this uh, hue and cry that he should resign, that he should resign. But uh, he basically stood the ground uh, because uh, he knew that he was on the right and that he uh, wanted to save public money and he would not let public money be wasted like the way they wanted it to be and sacrilege through uh, corruption and through misappropriation and through favoritism and nepotism. Uh, and non-transparent uh, methodology of doing things. So uh, this person kept on uh, taking a stand. And then when uh, no way uh, was found out, uh, then what happened was uh, that uh, they uh, basically uh, conjured up uh, a false and fabricated harassment case against this judgment. So this is what happens in whistleblowing sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, that you have to face a lot of problems. And uh, they basically instituted that case against the gentleman. And based upon that this conducted a fudge inquiry and then based upon that fudge inquiry, uh, it was recommended that that, that person uh, should be terminated. So that person then uh, was, was terminated from uh, his job and uh, simultaneously also uh, had to bear the brunt of this uh, harassment uh, proceeding which was uh, going on. And then uh, what happened was uh, that this went on for many months and he strongly stood his ground and he strongly stood uh, the fact that uh, he uh, had blown the whistle and that everyone had gotten together and had institutionalized corruption against him. And uh, as a result of that, uh, he was uh, then finally absolved of the harassment case and it was found out that that case uh, was a fabricated case and it had no substance at all. And even the lady who uh, basically had alleged all of that, uh, she also apologized and said that uh, she was pressurized to do it to save her own job. And then uh, that person uh, had filed a case and uh, that case was also one and then he got uh, uh, reinstated and he got his whole salaries and all of that. So what you can say is that there is a happy ending. But ladies and gentlemen, what is the moral of this whole whistleblowing case? One, you have to be strong internally. Two, you have to try to bring people with you amongst your own team or your own organization who would uh, stand with you uh, for doing what is right. Thirdly, you have to uh, stand up uh, against corrupt practices and waste practices. And you have to develop systems, you have to develop processes, you have to develop models, you have to develop frameworks so that you can make things more transparent. And then you have to bear the brunt and not uh, fall victim to the pressure which is being put on you from different sides. And sometimes that pressure also, this gentleman also uh, uh, said no to uh, crores and crores of rupees which were offered to him uh, as, as a bribe so that he would also fall in line. He was offered a Land Cruiser car, a uh, Jeep, a brand new one, so that uh, he would be enticed to do what was being told to him. But then you have to uh, stay strong against uh, such temptations. And then you also have to know that everyone or most of the people will be against you and they will then uh, get a herd uh, attack onto you and therefore you will then have to bear the brunt and you will have to fight that out also. But you have to believe in Allah, you have to believe in the fact that you are standing for the truth, you have to fight it out, you have to be determined, you have to sacrifice and then Allah will bless you and uh, based upon that, uh, just like uh, I ended the story that the person was reinstated, he was given all the salaries, the harassment case uh, was uh, uh, totally uh, withdrawn and there was an apology and all of that then also uh, tends to take place and therefore you have to take a stand and by blowing the whistle you can feel strong from the inside and you can contribute to your organization, to your community, to society and to nation and humanity as a whole because goodness has to prevail, truth has to prevail, honesty has to prevail and all of these scums have to be taken to task and they have to be sent to jail and they have to be punished and their assets should be confiscated. That is extremely important. Then we will see a better nation emerging, inshallah.